What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network, here for a reading of the Bitcoin Optech Group newsletter. Thank you very much to all the principals and associates of this great open source venture. Thank you also to all the sponsors of this great event. Today, newsletter number 43, on April 23rd, 2019. This week's newsletter announces the release of Lightning Network Demon 0.6 beta and the merge of BIP 158 support into Bitcoin Core's development branch. Also included are the regular sections about BEC32 sending support and notable changes to popular Bitcoin infrastructure projects. Action items. Help test Bitcoin Core release candidate, or version 0.18 release candidate. Uh, the fourth one for its next major version is now available. This resolves several issues found in previous versions and reverts the previous merge for a new feature that seemed to be causing problems for a minority of testers. See the notable code changes section for details. Release candidate testers have already helped improve the quality of the final release, and those trying this newest release candidate will further help contribute towards making 0.18 the best version of Bitcoin Core yet. Please use this issue for reporting feedback. News. Lightning Network Demon version 0.6 beta is released. Seven months after the release of 0.5 beta, this new major version brings a large number of notable changes. Headlining the changes are static channel backups. These allow users to create a single backup file anytime after a new channel has been opened. So they can recover funds from the channel and any previously open channel in the case of data loss, for example, a hard drive cache. This system is not perfect. For example, money stored in unsettled hash time lock contracts at the time delta data, data uh, was lost cannot currently be recovered. But it represents a major improvement in Lightning Network backup safety and a baseline that can be approved upon via proposed protocol changes and watchtower support. Other changes include several major reductions in the use of memory and bandwidth, plus an improved autopilot feature that helps users automatically open new channels for payment routing. Release binaries were also built with everything necessary to use the Lightning loop for trustlessly moving Lightning Network funds to an on-chain address without closing the channel. For more information, we encourage you to read the comprehensive release notes. Basic BIP158 support is merged in Bitcoin Core. With the merge of a pull request by Jim Poson into Bitcoin Core Master Development Branch, users can now enable a new block filter index configuration option, which is the default to off, that will generate a BIP158 compact block filter for each block on the chain, plus its corresponding filter header needed for BIP157 support. BIP158 introduces compact block filters, which are based on an efficient method for encoding a list of equally sized items. In the case of a basic block filter described in the BIP, this is a list of all spendable output script pubkeys in the current block, plus all the script pubkeys for the outputs spent by this block's input what developers call the previous outputs or brief outs. Each of these script pubkeys is hashed to give each item the same size. And then these items are sorted into a list that has duplicated elements removed. This list is then encoded using the Golom Rice coded sets GCS algorithm, also described in the BIP 158, losslessly reducing the size of that list. The specific basic filter provides enough information for anyone who knows a Bitcoin address to find any block containing a transaction, either paying that address, which would be the output script pubkey, or spending funds previously received to that address, brief out script pubkey. The search may, proceed, may produce false positive matches. So blocks which do not contain transactions for that address will be included in the results. Uh, 
but it will never result in false negatives. So blocks that do contain transactions for that address will never be omitted from the results. A separate BIP, BIP157, describes how these compact block filters can be served over the network using the Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer protocol. And the BIP157 is designed to work with BIP158 basic filters, but it can also be extended to support additional filters that encode lists of other items. One particular noteworthy part of BIP157 is that it introduces a concept of filter headers, where the header for each filter commits to a hash of the previous block's filter, the header plus a hash of the current filter. This creates a chain of filters similar to Bitcoin's chain of blocks. And it's designed so that it is easy to, comp to compare filters from multiple peers. Each peer can send just the filter header, which is 32 bytes. And if there are any headers that do not match, the client can request earlier and earlier headers in the chain until the divergence point is found. Generating a filter header on demand for a particular block would require hashing all the previous filters. So even though Bitcoin's core implementation does not currently support BIP157, it still stores these headers on disk for potential future use. When retrieving a filter using the new get block filter RPC, both the BIP158 filter and the BIP157 header are returned. So the command would be Bitcoin CLI get block filter of Bitcoin CLI get block hash 170 which puts out the filter and the header. We selected block 170 because its filter is the first that contains more than one element. It holds three elements. And because the latest block, as of this writing, block 572,879, has a filter that contains 8,599 elements, far too much for us to print elegantly. This will operate in the background, while the program otherwise continues functioning normally, taking about one to three hours on most computers. The user can then retrieve the filters for specific blocks using the new get block filter RPC. Filters for the entire blockchain currently use about four gigabytes. Growth over time can be seen in the following chart. These filters are currently used anywhere else in the program or exposed publicly via Bitcoin's core implementation of the peer-to-peer -peer protocol. A, pro a proposed next step for the filters that seems to enjoy wide support among Bitcoin core developers is to allow the local program to use the filters to quickly scan the blockchain for historic transactions. For example, if you upload a wallet in Bitcoin Core's multi-wallet mode and later then reload it, it never looks through every block. It needs to look through every block that has arrived since it was uploaded uh, to see if any of them contain a transaction affecting the wallet. With filters, the wallet can just check the smaller and faster filters first and only take a full look at any blocks that the filter indicates are a match for containing wallet transactions. BEC32 sending support, week six of 24, until the second anniversary of the SegWit soft fork lock-in on August 24th, 2019. The Optech newsletter will contain this weekly section that provides information to help developers and organizations implement BEC32 sending support the ability to pay native SegWit addresses. This does not require implementing SegWit yourself, but it does allow the people you pay to access all of SegWit's multiple benefits. This week, we look at some of the top voted BAC32 questions and answers from the Bitcoin Stack Exchange. This includes everything since BAC32 was first announced about two years ago. The first question, Will a Schnorr soft fork introduce a new address format? And although upgrading to BEC32 sending support should be easy, you probably do not want to repeat the work for Bitcoin's next upgrade or the upgrade after that.
Peter Woolley answers this question by explaining how an upgrade to Schnorr's based public keys and signatures can still use back 32 addresses. Optech will be cover this issue in greater detail in a future section. Jumping into the question asked by Bertrand Lund. With, will a Schnorr soft fork introduce a new address format, which would be not back 32 When we, hopefully, soft fork Schnorr signatures, will all the addresses be indistinguishable from back 32 addresses? And the answer here by Peter Woolley. They will be distinguishable, but they will still be back 32 addresses. The introduction of Schnorr signatures requires a new type of output. SegWit was designed with such extensibility in mind, and it defines 17 version numbers. Currently, only version 0 is used. SegWit version 0 outputs uh, with a 20-byte hash are known as pay-to-witness -public, pay public key hash outputs. And version 0 outputs with a 32-byte hash are known as pay-to-witness script hash outputs. A new version number can be introduced, for example, version 1, and given semantics through a soft fork. Schnorr signatures is one of the changes being considered for a proposal. However, back 32 addresses literally encode a version number plus a payload, which maps directly to the various versions of the SegWit outputs. The version number in the Bitcoin back 32 addresses is the fourth character. For all version 0 outputs, that version character is Q. And for version 1 outputs, this would be P. And we have here an uh, additional uh, comment by Jonas Nick. That depends on the implementation. BIP173 specifies how to decode back 32 addresses to a SegWit script pubkey, which works for any SegWit version. But in some implementation outputs with an unknown SegWit version, non-standard, and non-broadcasted, Bitcoin Core, as of version 0.17.3, is, is such an implementation. But as far as I know, the plan is to change that behavior. A Schnorr proposal could support pay to script hash nested SegWit version 1 programs, which would allow sending from all notable wallets today. Great question. Jumping back into the newsletter to question 2. Is it safe to translate a back 32 pay to witness public key hash address into a legacy pay to public key hash address. If you read newsletter 38, you will notice that the difference between a pay to witness public key hash and pay to script pay to public key hash address for the same underlying public key is only a few characters in the script pub key, making it impossible or making it possible to automatically convert one into the other. This answer by Andrew Chow and its accompanying comments explain why that's a bad idea that could cause users to lose funds. And now into the question here by Jonathan Cross. Back32 conversion to legacy pay to public key hash. Electrum now generates back32 addresses for SegWit wallets. With the example here of the address and of the pub key. If I search for that back32 address on btc.com, I get redirected uh, to this error. Uh, this pubkey to address tool also generates the same address from the above pubkey. Is it safe to receive funds on this legacy address? Is there a downside of using this rather than back 32 And we have here the answer of Andrew Chow. Is it safe to receive funds to this legacy address? Kind of. Your wallet knows the private key that corresponds to this address, as it is the same private key for the back 32 address. However, it does not necessarily know that it should be looking for coins sent to this address. So any transaction that sends coins to that address may not appear in your wallet, and thus it will be harder for you to spend those coins. Is there a downside to using this rather than back 32 As I said earlier, your wallet may look may not know that address and thus will not track it. Even if it does, it is better to use back 32 addresses as that means that you will be using SegWit. The transaction fees for spending from a SegWit address will be much lower than similar spends from a non-SegWit version of that address. And we have here an additional comment of Peter Woolley. Harder to spend may translate into lost if, for example, the key is on a hardware device that does not support signing 
for that converted address type. Also, uh, and this here is a uh, comment from Mesh Collier, also BAC32 supports is not currently as widespread, so it will not be usable in all these same situations as the legacy address. Jumping back into the newsletter. Question three, why does the BAC32 decode function require specifying the address's human readable part, HRP, instead of extracting it automatically? The HRP is separated from the rest of the address by a one. So it seems like the decoder could ignore that part all on its own. Peter Woolley explains that calling the decoder with the accepted HRP ensures that you do not accidentally pay Bitcoin to an address meant for testnet, Litecoin, or some other shitcoin. Gregory Maxwell also corrects an additional assumptions of the asker. And here the question by Kav Tultrok. Why does the decode function of the SegWit BAC32 encoder decoder take a human readable part as input? Looking at the code in the reference of BIP173, specifically, for example, this one right here, the function decode has the human readable part and the address. I understand that an error checking statement, but why check a user input HRP versus the decoded HRP from BAC32 decode? Also, I'm assuming that the DEC data 0 larger 16 checks to make sure that the byte at index 0 does not accept a value of 16, which would be invalid hex. Is that correct? And we have here the first answer by Peter Woolley. The human readable part is part of the BAC32 encoded string. And in the BAC32 decoding API, it returns along with the payload by the decoder after checking the checksum. We will want to compare it with the expected HRP, BIP173, which encodes the chain that the software is operating on. Otherwise, you could have a testnet node that accepts a mainnet BIP173 address or the other way around. And this answer by Gregory Maxwell. Um, he's assuming that uh, the question is about the assumption of deck data larger zero. No, it is because only version 0.16 are specified. Other versions might behave entirely different. As an aside, if it were a comparison for the snake or the, the sake of clapping to the range of a single hex character, the test would be smaller than 15, not larger than 16. Jumping back into the newsletter with question four. What block explorers recognize BEC32 addresses? More than two years after BEC32 was first proposed and a year after this question was first asked, Several popular block explorers do not yet support search or display of BEC32 addresses. The answer to this question suggests anyone who wants to learn the BEC32 status of various block explorers that they should check the BEC32 adoption Bitcoin wiki page. Here the question by Pinhat and answered or edited by Merch. Which block explorers recognize BEC32 addresses? Oh, that just jumped. As this time, the blockchain.info does not neither uh, does block chair or block cipher. Uh, and here the answer by Merge and Dark Knight. Please consider this wiki page for the latest information on block explorers supporting BAC32 addresses. And here we have the notable code and documentation changes this week in Bitcoin Core, LMB, C Lightning, Eclair, Lipsec P256 K1, and the Bitcoin improvement proposals. Note that unless otherwise noted, all mergers described for Bitcoin Core are to its master development branch. Some may also be backported to its pending release. This Bitcoin Core merge reverts this old merge in the 0.18 branch only, not the master development branch. See the notable code change section in newsletter number 33 for our detailed description of this merge, which was merged in early February. Several careful testers of the version 0.18 release candidates noticed that their node would sometimes stop requesting new transactions shortly after being started. This intermittent problem seemed to be related to the transaction requesting improvement made in this change to reduce the denial of service risk. At least two pull requests, these two, have already been op uh, opened to attempt to address the issue but there was a general agreement in the project to remove the new feature in version 0.18 so that it and its patches 
can be receiving receive additional testing uh, in the development branch before they are released in the production version. The goal of the release candidate cycle is to identify potential problems such as this before they affect regular users. So we think we speak for those users in thanking everyone involved in testing so far. Very true. This Bitcoin Core merge enhances the underlying function behind BAMFI RPC and the equivalent menu option in the GUI to include additional inputs if the fee increases cannot be paid for by simple decreasing the value of an existing change output. This eliminates the failure mode for Bitcoin Core described in Optex RB fee, a replaced by fee usability study. So allows fee bumps made by Bitcoin Core users to succeed more often. These C Lightning pull requests implement multiple changes to the gossip subsystem used for tracking which candidates are available and calculating roads across them. This work was motivated by the Million Channel project, and performance results from that project are included in many of the commit messages. If Optech is interpreting the results correctly, the difference between the first commit in the series and the last commit is a 79% reduction in memory use from 2.6 gigabytes to 0.6 gigabytes and an 80% reduction in the time to build a route to a randomly selected node within 20 hops from 60 seconds to 12 seconds. If even the improved values seem high, Recall that this is for the simulation network, more than 25 times the size of the current main, net, uh, main net network, <laughs> and a, a thousand times the size of the network a bit over a year ago. A notable part of this change is in Sea Lightning switching from its rather unique Belmont Ford Gibson routing algorithm to a slightly customized version of Dick Dijkstra. This eclair change adds a single UUID style identifier to tracking payments, no matter what hash time lock contracts are used, in relation to it, allowing simplified tracking of whether the payment itself ultimately succeeded or failed. This address, the case where the program automatically retries sending a temporary failed payment using a different route, and so generates non-ultimate failures and other information that may not be useful to a high-level API consumer. Although there are differences in implementation and motivation, this seems conceptually related to C Lightning, uh, to this C Lightning change, as described in the notable code changes section of newsletter 36, in two separate bullet points. And we have this eclair change implements a channel backup mechanism and provides documentation for using it. Unlike the LND static channel backups described earlier in this newsletter, this needs to be backed up after every payment. A configuration option allows Eclair to call a script you specify to automatically handle backing up the data file whenever a backup is needed. And this Eclair change adds support for plugins written in Scala, Java, and Java Virtual Machine compatible languages. Plugins are implemented for the plugin interface and see the news newly added documentation for details. Peers, you gotta subscribe to the Bitcoin Optech newsletter. And again, thank you very much to all the sponsors and contributors to this awesome open source event. Thank you very much for joining me today, peers, and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.